Hello, happy Monday. Welcome back to another Communicate Great podcast episode where we teach you tips and tricks to level up your communication skills. I am Emma Roy. I am Tracy Poe. I need to get closer to my mic. I've switched mics for this episode. That's okay. Technical difficult. Technical yes. difficulties. Oh my gosh. Anyways, <laughs> we are into November. It is probably the happiest time of year for me. November to October, November, December. Um, I thrive. I love life. I wake up singing and I wake up with a purpose. Then January hits and I am sad because the holidays are over. <laughs> But we're not going to worry about that because it's November. We're thriving. The air is crisp. Football is going. I can drink as much Starbucks as I want to without feeling guilty. Chili in the crock pot. Tracy, what is your favorite fall? Not tradition, but like when you think word association game. Let's go. Communication yep. Let's style. Let's do it. Let's I'm do it. I'm going to say something. You say the first thing that pops into your head. November. December. Okay, let's try again. Fall. I think of the colors, like the leaves, the turning leaves and the colors. You know, the fall colors. My shirt. Some of my favorite colors. Did what? you say your shirt's fall color? Well, it's cut orangish. Yeah. Agree to disagree. December. <laughs> I think of Christmas. Okay. I thought that was going to be a lot more fun. That was a good game. Thanks for playing. Thanks for playing okay. my reindeer games. Let, let me do it to you. You have not asked me any questions in a long time. So I know, now. but we're going to get this back. We're getting our little banter going. I'm going to flip. Okay. Let me, let me ask you some questions. Word association. Okay. Okay. September. Hot. Yeah, I agree. October. Pumpkin patches. Yes, yes. November. Thanksgiving. December. Death. <laughs> Not what? That's going to sound really weird. Okay, hear me out. Okay. It's because like the trees are dead. We don't have to mow our grass anymore because <laughs> it's not grow. It's done growing for the next few months. You don't have to mow anymore. The trees are bare or if you're in Texas, like half the time they're bare, half the time there's a couple leaves still on them. I mean, like, the air just smells crisp and clean, and, like, all the annoying pesky birds have migrated, so, like, nothing poops on my car. The mosquitoes are gone, so I don't have to worry about getting bit going outside. The snakes are underground. Like, it's just a good time. So maybe death wasn't the right thing, but that's what popped in my head, but it's, like, everything's, like, cold. I don't know everything's cold and white and gray and like there's not much color and that's my favorite time of the year i see i think of christmas or a december as like i said christmas but to me it's it evokes like hustle and bustle and and the crisp in the air and love yeah. and just you know people yeah. pouring into each other and and that kind of thing for me january wow is more of what you said where to me it there's a, there's a definite chill in the air and I don't know I just I like the fall I like winter I like the spring okay uh, not a fan of summer nope. um so I I just don't you know we're here in Texas and it's really hot yeah really hot i think in it's the funny summer. how like we're kind of the same but different because we both like the same seasons but for different reasons and you're like mm. happiness family joy everyone's pouring into each other and i'm like no one's talking to me i don't have to go see my friends it's cold i don't have to get out of my house total different reasons same vibe though and that's what matters so way to go no i love january and february because that's usually when it snows in texas yes and yes. I mean, it kind of sucks because, like, whenever everyone's power goes out, like, it can be scary for some people. But I love when it ices on the road. And it's, like, a week long. Because Texas, I mean, it's, it's humid. It's, like, the ice, it doesn't just snow, it ices. So, like, in Colorado, you can go drive on the powdery snow. But in Texas, you're driving on slick ice. It doesn't matter if you have an all-wheel drive vehicle. Like, you're screwed, you know? And so I love it because Texas freaks out and the whole state shuts down and no one knows how to handle things. So then you just get like a week long vacation bundled up in your house. And for me, I love it. Some people might not, but for me, I'm like, yes. I love you Texans for not knowing how to drive in the winter. It's the greatest thing of all. Um, 
So let's I, I do through this. I was going to say, I do have one more. Let me hit you with this Ooh. one. Okay. Low self-esteem. Communicate great. <laughs> because we're talking about it. We're doing a podcast series. Okay. I was like, mm, okay. Do I you like undermit it. what I stood? I, I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's get into this. We just, we always chase rabbits but that's okay because that's what makes us us um you have to have a little fun in life you know last week we kind of talked about laughing things off not taking things so yes. seriously mom had five um kind of tips slash tricks you know and so it's just i don't know if you want to recap over them but my the ones that stood out to me the most were just the self not it was not self-encouragement it was self um like kind of self-compassion i think yes it was um it's okay to laugh things off. It's okay if things aren't perfect, you know, don't be so uptight, overwhelming. And then just reframing your mindset, I think was a major thing that stood out for me as well is you got to reframe your mindset, you know, cause I'm so good at like, once something happens, it sucks. I'm down. Life sucks. I get sucked into that negativity. And then that's also where your friends come into play, you know, surround yourself with those like-minded positive people that will help reframe your mindset to take the sour lemons and make super sweet and fun lemonade so we're going to talk about our five last little tips and tricks for your self-esteem tracy take it away oh i will and then at the end let's remember to give a shout out to lauren we kind of got yes. way way off way off today lauren is that's our okay. sponsor we love you lauren <laughs> <laughs> okay so as emma was mentioning this is a three-part series, and so the first series, we or the first episode of this series, we talked about how low self-esteem impacts our communication, and then therefore that impacts our relationships. And so it's really important to take a serious look at what your self-esteem level is. What do you esteem yourself as what value do you give yourself right how do you esteem yourself and so then the the next episode which was the last one we gave five tips like Emma was talking about on ways to boost your self-esteem and we're going to end this three-part series with the final five tips on boosting your self-esteem and so Emma you did a really good job of recapping um, but people Thanks. need to go back and listen to the first two episodes if they have not caught those yes and so you were talking about self-compassion is one of the ones that we were talking about and, and you hit that one. So bouncing off of that one, self-care. Mm. So if you are not taking care of yourself, if you are not one of the things that's so prevalent out there is put the oxygen mask on yourself. And if we are not putting the oxygen mask on ourself, it's so easy to get run down. And what happens when we get run down? Do we see things in a clear light? Do we see things in a positive light? Or is it super easy to see the negative, to just fall down that spiral, that downward spiral of seeing the worst in things? I don't know, Emma, for you, whether it's you or someone you know, do you have any experience or have you witnessed somebody who's just not taking care of themselves? They're not getting enough sleep. Yeah. They're not eating right. They're not balancing work life, which, you know, I, I've admitted freely in the past yeah. that I am a workaholic. And that's kind of been my thing this year is really trying to focus on not being a workaholic and, and allowing myself to have fun with the people in my life. But all of that to say, do you have knowledge of, or can you talk about a situation where somebody just wasn't taking care of themselves? And what was the result of that with their attitude, with their demeanor? I think for me in my life, what I see constantly is the women in power that I look up to. It seems that self-care is always last on their to-do list. So you, you know, you're my boss in one part. And then my other boss, I love her to death. Y'all, are both very much the definition of girl boss, like boss bleep, you know, because y'all are so powerful and y'all are just filled to the brim. Like, I mean, I look up to, and I mean, even my aunt-in-law, I mean, she is like, when I think of like a girl boss, boss, you said I can't cuss in this podcast, but boss B, I think of my bosses and then my 
aunt in law. She's my in law. I love her. Um, because y'all are just taking care of everyone else. I mean, y'all run a tight ship in the best way. You know, you have that authority. You get your s done. You, you know, you know business. And I, but also like the work life balance isn't always there. Um, and so I mean, I've seen it like whenever we get ready for the business conference. <laughs> It is terrifying to be around you. Love you. Um, but you are just so go, go, go that it's like at any moment she's going to and she's going to like have a mental breakdown and you didn't. You did a fantastic job with the past conference. You actually I loved being around you. You did a fantastic job of making sure everything got done in a timely manner but also just enjoying the step of the way. Um, uh, or every step of the way just because that's so important. But I have seen firsthand what happens, I mean, even me, whenever you are just so go, 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 you're taking care of everyone else, you're doing business, you're doing meetings, you're forgetting to eat lunch, you're only drinking coffee, you're packing your schedule as full as possible because if you're busy, at least you're doing something. I mean, I've been there, I've seen people go there, but man, that crash is 10 times worse than just taking a day and letting things pile. Like I would rather miss a meeting or two and be behind on schedule than have that crash of when you don't take care of yourself because the I mean mood changes you like physically get sick mentally you're drained it affects your relationships outside of work you know your personal relationships it can affect right. your relationship with your kids mm-hmm. it can affect your relationship you can affect your self-esteem like you could hate yourself you're gonna be like what have I become so basically all of that rambling was to say, I've been there firsthand. I've seen it in all of the powerful women in my life. And I just think it is so important to have that self-care, have that work-life balance. That's one of the things I love about um, the brokerage I work for. They are very big on hustling and pushing ourselves, but they're also very big on like family, work-life balance. It's okay. Like, breathe you'll be all right and so I think that's just so awesome when you can manage those two because it is very hard to find that balance that I agree <laughs> and so you're right so the picture that you painted I just this mic thing is not working okay I'm just gonna pick it up and hold it and that's what I had to do with it's mine. just gonna me. it's just gonna bang around okay that made so, a little because I broke it my little oh. screen anyways <laughs> <laughs> don't come Okay. So uh, no, but you did, you painted a really good picture of people who get so busy that they have that crash. And when we have that crash, we're not feeling good about ourselves Mm -hmm. very often. Like, right. Who's laying in bed feeling really, really sick because they push themselves so hard and they're thinking, gosh, I feel really good about myself. Right. Like it's probably not happening. So I was, well, this is another little ramble. Um, in the summer I was actually hospitalized due to that. I ended up having a procedure on my stomach because I was in the process of finishing real estate school. I was in college. I was working full-time for you. And then I was kind of working another job leisurely in my free time. And it just got to the point where I was doing so much that my body literally could not take it. And my food was not like, I couldn't break down my food and my stomach and my intestines got super inflamed and I had to have a procedure. So don't let that happen to you. It is not worth it. And ever since then, I feel like I've just been super zen and chill. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely, you have to put yourself first in those situations. You know, following that, because we are talking about self-care, you know, as your mom and I'm standing in the ER with you and just (laughs) watching your pain level, you know, when Andrew was watching your pain level and, you know, we were all really concerned about you and the doctor even came out from the back to meet you in the, in the ER, um, in the waiting room. So anyhow, let that, let that be a sort of a, a testimony of yes. really, we have to take care of ourselves. Care of yourself, it's not worth it. Right. Okay. So point number two of this, uh, of this episode where we're talking about five tips to help boost your self esteem is avoid comparing yourself. Now here, yeah. Here's the deal. When I was teaching interpersonal communication at college, when we got to this part of of the lesson, we would talk about not comparing yourself. 
And the women had one reaction, by and large, not across the board, by and large, the women would have one reaction to this piece of advice and the men would have another reaction. And so the men would think, well, no, we're supposed to compare ourselves to each other because that's how we become better. (laughs) And so for a man, they see, they see comparison as a challenge. I'm like motivation. A motivation. Yes. Whereas women looking at the commercials of the super skinny models and the perfect complexions and the, you know, just all of those images, not thinking, wow, these are touched up. And so, you know, for women comparing ourselves to each other, it's usually a negative because, oh, I'm not that. I'm not that pretty. I'm not that smart. I'm not that accomplished. I'm not that whatever. And so if we go back to the whole reason for this series, when I was talking to my friend about the conference and she was talking about how women compare each other, compare themselves to other people, and they they don't feel as much. They feel less than. And so it is so important to really think about if you are comparing yourself, think about when you're falling into that and what is your mindset? Is What is that internal conversation you're having with yourself? Is it, I'm not enough. I'm not smart enough, pretty enough, whatever. Or is it, daggum, that girl is getting it. I want to do that, (laughs) right? So think about what your internal conversation is. What is that intrapersonal communication that's going on, that self-talk? And if it's negative, you've got to stop. And if it's positive, you know, let that spur you on. But in general, comparing yourself usually results in negativity. Emma, do you have any thoughts on that? hammer meat nail you nailed it i couldn't agree more (laughs) yeah okay so number three for this episode which is technically i think number eight but number three and it kind of goes along with take care of yourself so enjoy hobbies enjoy relaxation enjoy the things that bring you fulfillment bring you light, right? So I'll give a personal story on this one. And I know I've referenced this before in a different episode and I don't even know which episode, but I had a friend, we worked together and I walked in one day and I walked past her and she stopped me as I was about to go into my office. And she said, Hey, God gave me a word to give you. And so like I stop and I kind of lean in, she's sitting at her desk and she said that I was in my quiet time. And God told me to tell you to take up a hobby that you used to have. And I was, it literally brought me to tears. And I had to go into my office and shut my door because, uh, you know, this is the job that I walked away from before I started Communicate Great, where it was killing me. I mean, physically, emotionally, spiritually, I was putting in so many hours and giving so much of myself that it was truly detrimental. And, you know, over the years, I would go into a doctor for, you know, a checkup or whatever, and they would always ask, what are you doing for fun? And I would look at them and I would say, what are you talking about? (laughs) Right. What are you talking about? What is your hobby? What do you, what is a hobby? You know, and it was always me saying, I don't have fun. I just do things all the time, whether it's for work or volunteering or for my family or whatever, I give and I give and I give and I give. And in that moment in my life, man, God knew I I could not keep that pace up. And, you know, like you mentioned, I was working so hard. And at one point I was sick for months Mm -hmm. and I, and I normally don't get sick at least to that extent, you know, a little cold here and there, but when she brought me that word, I took it very, very seriously because, you know, when God is telling somebody to tell me something, you have to stop and and take note of that. And so, and so I knew that growing up, I love 
taking pictures. I love photography. And I used to have a, a really good camera. That was before all of this, oh, like, DLR, DSR, whatever it's all called. Um, it was when you took your actual film and you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. You took your actual film and you took it in somewhere and had it developed and then had the pictures printed. And you're like, what are you talking about? Did you just so, say I don't know what you're talking about. They still do that. Do they? Do they I've really? That. Yes. It's oh. hard to find, but I've had, it's a lot more expensive. Um, ah, I no, thought I there thought was no more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm there with you, girlfriend. I got you. Well, I, you know, I just use my phone now and, and it's a lot cheaper than buying. Well, I don't know. Phones are so expensive now, but anyhow, so I used to really like love photography. And so every once in a while, my husband and I go camping for a weekend. And when we were doing that, I made sure to pack my good camera so that I could go take pictures and know it's not film anymore. But so engage in hobbies and activities that you really enjoy that are going to bring you some life to your life, if that makes yeah. sense. So do you have any thoughts on that? Nope. No, All I'm right, there with you. I'm right Let, there with you. Chuck it along. Let's, let's go to number four. So we're getting close to the end of our 10 tips for growing your self-esteem. And this one, I really want to say with some sobriety, I want people to understand the gravity of what's about to come out of my mouth. If your self-esteem is so low that it is causing you serious issues emotionally and mentally, I really think you need to go get some third party help. And I think as a society, we're doing so much better than we used to with getting help with our, our mental health. And it used to be a very, very negative stigma. And I think there still is some negativity to some extent, but I think by and large, we're making progress on saying it's really okay to go talk to somebody. It's really okay to go get some help. And so I, as you're looking at your self esteem, as you're thinking through and analyzing really where you are, ask yourself if this is something that you can handle on your own with some of these tips, or is this something that you need to go talk to somebody about? And if you feel like you may not have the best judgment for yourself, ask somebody you're close to that you really trust, you know, Hey, what, what do you think my self-esteem is like? Where do you see it? Do you think I need to go talk to someone who is a, as a third party, you know, and doesn't have a vested interest or whatever. And that's why we talked about in the last episode, you want to surround yourself with positive people, but you want those people to be honest. You don't want people surrounded, surrounding you who just say what they think you want them to say, mm. who say things that they think you want to hear. That's not authentic. That's not healthy. That's not helpful. So find those people in your life who will speak truth to you. Emma, you are one of the people who will speak truth to me. And I don't always like it, but when you speak truth to me, <laughs> well, I don't I stop. always do it the best way probably, but. Well, but, but it is something that I will walk away from and pray about and ask yeah. Lord, Lord, what is the truth in this? And so Absolutely. I would say seriously consider talking to a, a third party, a neutral third party. That's kind of my mediator language coming out, but you know, a therapist, a counselor, somebody who is trained professionally and who has that license, um, hanging on their wall that says they know how to help you. And if you're a Christian, go seek Christian counseling or therapy. Um, yeah. Not that they're okay. I, I please, please, I don't want anybody to misunderstand. <laughs> if you are a therapist or a counselor and you are not a Christian, I am in no way negate, negating your philosophy, your education, your heart. I'm not at all. I am simply saying that um, 
there are times when I have, because I'm a Christian, you're a Christian, and how do I say this? We live, we live with certain thoughts and values, not that other people don't, man, I'm stepping in it, but okay. Let me give you an advice. Let me give you advice. I, um, when I was married to your dad, I went to a, a counselor who gave direct advice that went wholly against what I believe as a Christian. And so I think when we go to counselors and or therapists, just be aware that, um, they, I might edit this whole part out. I think I'm going to edit this whole part out, but okay, let's go to tip number five. <laughs> let's, let me, let me go back and, um, let me touch my nose to remind me where we're going to edit it out. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So the final tip is practice gratitude. And so how easy is it for us to have that positive attitude to see our self-esteem boosted when we are busy being positive and feeding into each other? So Emma, tell me um, what your thoughts are on fostering this positive outlook, how you think that, that might impact our own self-esteem. For me personally, it's fake it till you make it. <laughs> you know, if I go in somewhere and I force myself to have a positive attitude, usually by the time I'm in the thick, I really do have a positive attitude. It's genuine, you know? I mean, we all do things that we don't want to do. That's life, you know? But I think what you do with your mindset and how you reframe your mindset, um, I think it goes a really long way. And I think it is super important just to have that positive mindset and that attitude because, I mean, if you go with someone with such a negative, drastic, woe is me, I hate myself, I hate this, I hate life attitude, you're not going to get as far. You're not going to enjoy the outcome of whatever you're doing. So right. I think in order to reap what you sow to your fullest potential, just have a positive attitude, fake it till you make it, find the little victories, find the lemonade and the lemons. Mm -hmm. Well, it's certainly it's easier... Awesome. It's certainly easier for us to have a higher self-esteem when we're feeling better about ourselves and when we are being positive and being grateful for what we have, that's only going to help us feel better about ourselves, right? I don't know any positive people who, um, who really struggle with seeing negative things in life, right? It's like you can't, yeah. you can't be positive consistently. Now I'm not saying that you can't have your down days because everybody has their down days or their down times. But in general, if you are busy looking at things to be grateful for, you're going to be thinking more positively and feeling better about yourself. So there you go. Those are the last tips on um, building our self-esteem. And so that's our three-part series. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Hope everyone had a great little time hanging in with us and getting a chit chat. Um, back to our sponsor. Thank you, Lauren, from the wellness company or the wellness group. Um, we are grateful for you. And go check her out. We will link all of her information in the comments below. We have some Communicate Great upcoming. Yes, that's right. See, I need higher self-esteem because when I talk half the time, I'm like, I'm so used to the word vomit. <laughs> Um, check our website, check our social media for upcoming events. And we have, uh, in 2024, we have our business conference. That is what they're called business conference coming up. So stay tuned for that. And we will chat with everybody next week. I hope everyone has a fantastic Monday and the rest of the week and a fantastic start of your November. All right. Bye. You got to end it.